Here we're going to talk through how to set up a Rust AWS SDK development environment. There are four key components to this particular setup. First up, we have the editor. In your editor, whatever you choose to use, in my case, I'm going to choose IntelliJ, I would go through and configure it with the plugins necessary to develop. So the AWS toolkit will then install things like Amazon Code Whisper and Amazon Q, which allow me to do things like chat about a particular program, ask some questions, for example, about, let's say, developing with Rust in the SDK, and even get code completions with Rust. So this is a great uh, configuration to start with. Next up, if you move down to the Rust AWS SDK here, you're going to need to have AWS credentials here. That's really one of the key things to set up. And you're also going to need to use Cargo to configure your project to use the AWS SDK. We also need to have access to Rust as well. And so fortunately, it's very sim simple with uh, Rust. All you need to do is run Rust up, and that will install Rust on your environment. And then if we get into the environment, there's actually quite a few choices here for how to develop uh, with Rust and AWS. If we take a look at some of the GPU options, if you're using uh, large language models and you're developing for them, you will want to have access to a GPU. There are two different ways that I've uh, traditionally done this. One of them is the Amazon LightSail environment. This has access to a GPU, so you can obviously do a Rust up, get that working. There also is the uh, remote EC2 instance. So if you need a big, powerful machine, this is one of the most cost-effective ways to develop is you could actually spin up an EC2 instance and then connect your remote editor to it. There also is the local environment, right? If you have access to a GPU, if you have a powerful local machine, you can also set up Rust and the AWS SDK. And then there's these cloud-based development environments. Amazon has Code Catalyst, which is a, a great feature that allows you to set up these cloud-based environments and even remotely talk to it with your editor. So there's quite a few options here when you're setting up your environment. And there's even the uh, Amazon SageMaker SDK as well. So uh, many choices to choose from. And a, a big uh, really factor here is whether you're going to use the GPU or not. Really, the next step here is to look at the AWS SDK for Rust documentation. If you take a look here, you can see Rust is a systems programming language without garbage collection. So this is a really a, a key fact here, and it's also focused on safety, speed, and concurrency. Now, in order to use it, you'll need to have credentials set up. So you would go through here and set these up locally. And then finally, if you want to look at some of the documentation as well, you can go through here and look at the different documentation examples uh, in this particular scenario here, you can see that it shows you how to talk to asynchronously the uh, API gateway. Now, if we go to installation, we also see Rust up here. Pretty simple. You just cut and paste this and you're ready to go. All right. Now that you've got all that set up, and one of the ways you can test it is to go to your editor and say which Rust C. So where is the compiler? It shows you that uh, it, it has access to the compiler or it doesn't. In my case, I do. I also can type in which Rust up, and you can see here I've got Rust uh, up, and I've also got the Rust compiler installed. Once you've got that going, all you have to do is type in uh, cargo. And if we type in help here, you can see that I can now use the package management tool to set up a project. Typically, what you would do here is you just say cargo new and you would type in hello or whatever it is you want to call the project. In this case, I've already set up a new project called S3 Bucket Lister. Let's take a look at the key components inside of this particular project. So first up here, uh, we have the structure where I have the main file, and you can see the code right here. We also have the cargo file, which in this case, it has the AWS config, the AWS SDK for S3. So this would depend on which particular part of AWS you're using, Lambda, S3, uh, API gateway, etc. It, it really depends on what service you want to talk to. And then this is the async uh, library Tokyo that is involved with the SDK. There also is the plugins available. So if we look at this right here, AWS, notice that I've got set up here Amazon Q, and I've also got set up Code Whisper. So the Code Whisper is the code completion. So it can do multi-line Rust completion, which is pretty awesome. So it could do, for example, a whole function like this. And then in terms of the uh, chat, this is a, a pretty slick feature is if we go over to this button here, we can actually say something like, hey, I want you to explain this code. So how would I do this? 
Well, I would just go over here, highlight this function, which again, asynchronously lists the buckets. I right click on it and I say, um, send to Amazon Q, and we can say, explain the code. And then at this case, this particular scenario here, it throws it into the window. It goes through and it looks at it, uh, the code and it gives me a nice breakdown. So it says, in this case, the async bucket defines an asynchronous function. The config uh, loads the AWS configuration. So this is a really, uh, I think, sophisticated way to use the SDK is to actually, when you don't understand a particular example uh, or you're struggling with something, you can actually ask the coding assistant for help just like you would do a colleague. And, and I think this is an emerging style of, of software development that we're gonna see more and more. So. We see in this case here, if I, I walk through the code, that again, there's a very simple uh, piece of code here, config, client, response. We go through here and we get the buckets, and then I get a count of the buckets, and then I say for bucket uh, in the response, uh, go ahead and print those out. Now, in order to run it, if we go to the main function here, it does very little. All it has to have is the Tokyo, which allows us to do the async call here. And then to run it, uh, very straightforward as long as you're in the correct directory in this case i need to cd into s3 bucket and what i can do is just type in cargo run and cargo run will pull it all together and then you can see here that it was able to actually uh, find all the buckets in my account so uh, a pretty straightforward process here once you've got the cargo set up you've got the AWS plugin you've got your development environment set up and you've got your AWS credentials and one of the really uh, big advantages, again, of the Rust language is how performant it is and how safe it is. So you could save substantial money by converting uh, maybe legacy code that's using the AWS SDK uh, to the Rust uh, SDK. And this is really one of the reasons to start to look at the Rust SDK.